Good morning, guys. Afternoon, evening, wherever you may be. Thanks for joining me for another flight. Today we're going from Sunboro, EGPB, Echo Golf Papa Bravo, uh, down to Inverness, uh, Echo Golf Papa Echo. So it's 167 nautical miles for our flight here. And uh, the weather looks to be okay. Shouldn't run into any issues. So let's get going. Let's go out and get to our plane. Beautiful DA62. Okay. So we'll just have a super quick walk around here since we're out here. And gear looks okay. Prop and spinner, all right. Leading edge is okay. That's all right. Flaps and ailerons. Fuselage is all right. Elevator, rudder, and trim tab. Elevator, trim tab. Okay, that all looks all right. Registration is blank. <laughs> this is the Xbox livery. So our trailing edge, flaps okay, aileron okay, light all right. It's the leading edge of the wing. Right, the icing boots look okay. Check this pendant, this prop, spinner. Go down here, have a look at the landing gear. Right, wing root, static ports aren't clogged, and the nose is all right. Check our landing gear, check our doors, okay. Another engine, all right. Gear looks okay here. Oh. Okay, so that's a super quick walk around. You know, don't usually do walk arounds in flight simulator, but we'll hop on in. Okay, let's switch the camera view for you guys here. Oops, that's not the camera view. Alright. Turn off that Xbox controller that could crash our sim here. Don't want that. So today all we have for SF economy is uh, 70 kilograms going from Sumboro to Inverness of uh, cargo. So we have that loaded. Oops, what am I doing here? Okay. Now you can't see the cargo. It's back there behind the far passenger seats back there in the back. <laughs> Okay, so we'll get started. Let's go over our checklist here. Four starting engine. And we don't have a... Uh, uh, we don't have any... Any controllers on right now, so... We do have one center, but it's not Scotland center, so... We can't do anything with that, so power lever is uh, idle. First, we check our pumps here, make sure they're on. Idle, parking brake is set. As you can see, they are idle and it is set. The avionics master switch is off, yes it is. Gear selector is down, yes it is. Alternators check both on. Go ahead and turn those on. There they are. Fuel pump left and right check off. Yes, they are both off. Electrical master on, so we'll turn that on. Turn on our PFD and our MFD. Get them powered up. Strobe lights. Anti collision lights. Those are right here. Position and strobe. Engine master left on. So we come down here. Turn on our left engine master down there at the bottom left. Let it warm up here. You'll see it all glow. Okay, it's warmed up. Scream out the window, pro clear prop. Go ahead and start our left engine. See the RPMs come up here, see our gauges come alive. Okay, that is very good, that's what we want. The 
want any funny stuff happening there. All right, looks good. Coolant's warming up. Oil pressure is active. Okay, that looks good. So we'll do the uh, right engine. Okay, they come alive there. Wait for a glow plug. Right glow on. Okay, that's good. That's ready to go. Now we just push our starter. Clear prop. RPM's alive. Oil pressure's alive. Gauges are alive on the right engine. Okay, so everything's warming up. So go ahead and push that RPM up while we plan our flight here. just below 10. So. Touchies. Okay, it should be okay there. So after engine start, Avionic Master, we'll go ahead and uh, turn that on. Okay, that brings live all our avionics. We have this set. Electrical equipment on is required. Yes, it is. Flight instrument, the avionics set is required. So we'll go ahead and set... Uh, Flight plan, configure our uh, Q&H and heading, altitude, transponder, so we'll go ahead with that flight plan. So our origin is Echo Golf, Papa Bravo, Sunboro. Today, guys, we're doing uh, runway 15, runway 15. I've never, uh, never taken off from uh, 15, but I have landed on 33. So with the way the wind is, the wind is uh, 14 knots at 160. So it's a good, uh, good headwind for takeoff. And our route is uh, fairly simple today. It's, uh, it's Cocal and INS Inverness. So it's nothing. Nothing too exciting. And we uh, pre-planned it over SimBrief. Great uh, application to use. Plan your flights, put them right into uh, vPilot. So, controllers have them. And no, we're not there. Yes, we are there. And then, so our destination is... Echo, Golf, Papa, Echo. And today, guys, we're doing, uh, once we hit cruise, 8,000 feet, we're going to uh, run the sim at 3x. So we're not sitting there for a super long time. So we can get down to Inverness, get down to uh, our descent, and then uh, run it back to uh, its regular speed. So. Wouldn't want anyone to watch a good two-hour flight of... Uh, Nothing there. So there's the there's the uh, meter for for Inverness. So it's 3:30 at three knots. So runway five looks like the uh, suspect for today. So okay. So there's our flight planned. So we'll take off runway 15. Get up to 1,000. Make our right turn on the course. Come down to Cocal. Further south past wick there. We'll probably slow the sim back down around Cocal because when you run it at 3x and uh, your aircraft makes a turn, it seems to turn, overshoot the course, then turn back, overshoot the course, and you're running the sim super fast and it's overshooting the course line back and forth. And yeah, it's all out of place. So we'll probably do that. So we'll go with our 5 mile radius here. We'll come over here and we'll set uh, set up our primary flight display. So we're reading a, a Q and H of one zero two seven. So pressure's just creeping up here at Sunboro. One zero two seven. There we go. Gets our altitude about right. And we'll go and program our altitude for this flight. So I got the Honeycomb Bravo. It's a nice, uh, nice unit here. Turn the knob to ALT and then you can use the switch on the right. You can adjust the altitude. But it only does it in hundreds, so it does 
take a while to get up to even if you're really high, but it's fine for GA, but if you're in like a jet or something, it can take a while to get up to flight level three zero, four zero, whatever you may have there. So. Okay, so we have the Q and H set, we have the altitude set, we'll go and set our runway heading. Runway one five is one forty five magnetic, so where are we? So again, with the Bravo, you set it to uh, heading mode, and then you go ahead and turn the right knob and adjust your, your heading. So, 145. Just We can leave that on heading, and then there's our GPS, so we follow that. So, PFD options, our wind is there, DME, don't have that set. So we'll go ahead and set the uh, vocalizer for for Sunboro, which is 1085. And we can set the VOR for Sunboro as well. In case anything happens after takeoff, we know where to navigate, so that registers there, 11735, and that's there. So it's right on, on the airport here, and then that, of course, is as well. But hope. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our transponder. Transponder, transponder, so my good old trusty SciTech radio panel here. Go ahead and set that to 2000. 2000, that's IFR for UK, am I right? Europe, UK? If not, uh, can someone tell me? Because I did search and that's, that's what I seem to find. 2000 is it's default IFR for, for UK. So. Okay, MV Onyx, self light entrance, AV Onyx set. Strobe lights, check on, they are on. Position lights, they are on. Trim, set. So we're really light today, guys. It's gonna be no problem with speed or takeoff or anything, so we can set that like that. And our taxi. And our taxi, I kind of just merge with my gust checks. So. Okay, we'll put the throttle back down, nice and warmed up now. Alright, so we'll, uh,. Let's do our ghost call here, since we don't have any, any controllers on. Just, just double check, make sure one didn't come on when we were sitting here. I'll go ahead and program this ENOS center. I don't, I don't know where that center is or what part of the uh, area it serves, but let's just listen, see if anyone's on. Back to 122.8. Okay, we'll make our call. We'll taxi out to uh, 15 and get going. Sunboro traffic. Uh, Charlie, Juliet, Sierra, Victor, Romeo, type Diamond Twin. Taxiing to runway 15 via East Taxiway and uh, Taxiway Kilo, backtracking 15. Sunboro traffic. Okay, so we're ready to go here. So, parking brake come off. Add a little throttle, get around that static plane there. Guys, when we get to Inverness, we'll jump out and have a look around the airport, like we did here yesterday. So, record our flight on FSE, and then uh, we'll get out, have a look, and uh, pray that our sim doesn't crash. <laughs> if you remember yesterday, it uh, certainly did crash, and I do need taxi lights when I'm taxiing, so maybe I should have looked a little closer at that taxi checklist there. That's okay. So here's East Taxiway, there's Taxiway Kilo, 3315. Verify that we're on the right runway. Don't see anyone final or anything. Don't see anyone on radar either. We could probably do really late. We probably could have did an intersection takeoff there. But we got the runway and we got the time, so why not? Okay, that 
that's 97 there, so here, let's pass this threshold here, turn around, right on the numbers, and uh, line ourselves up. So that 1-5 verifies to me it's 1-5. Runway 1-5. Line ourselves up the best we can here. Do our check here. So let's do something different this time. Let's do the actual run-up check. So don't have anyone coming in. So you usually you probably wouldn't do this right on the when you're lined up to take off. But okay, so our run-up check. So I don't know if flight simulator. Has the proper proper run-up check for this. You know, I do have it on my device here. I just I can't remember off the top of my head, so I don't want to lead you guys to the wrong uh, wrong type of checklist here. So let me scan through this. Starting engine before starting before taxi. Before takeoff, yeah, here's our before takeoff. So position airplane into wind if possible. Yes, it is. Parking brake set. Okay, we're not going to do that because FSE may want to record our flight. We don't want to record it yet. Passenger door check closed. So yeah, it, uh, they look closed. Left and right hand pilot doors. Yeah, they're closed. Front baggage doors. They are closed. And Enunciators, engine, system page, check, okay, normal range, except oil pressure may be in the yellow range. The worn engine and power lever set title, check, pressed in. Okay, so let's give that a quick check. Looks okay. And looks alright. Okay, so we'll go down here. And it says circuit breakers, check, pressed in. They're not modeled in the uh, flight simulator. In the X-plane plane I was flying, they were modeled. You could set the failures, and I had them set at extreme one time, and uh, they would pop out on me. So, <laughs> longitudinal trim, it is set. Fuel selector check on left hand and right hand. So here's our fuel selectors. They are on left hand and right hand. Directional trim centered, yes it is. Flaps check function and indicators. Flaps function. So let's put them all the way down. See them going down on the right wing there. See them down on the left wing. And we can see them down on our indicator. We can see them come up on the right wing. See them come all the way back up on the uh, left wing. Fine on the indicator, reading up. Okay, so that's our flaps. Flight controls. Unrestricted free movement, correct sense. So let's go ahead and check those out. So, right, and that comes up. Our aileron, that is down. Left, that is up. That is down. And we can't see the elevator. So, we'll do that, and the rudder. There we go. Correct sense, yes. Pedo heating on if required. We'll turn that on. Landing light on if required. Yes, it is. Taxi off. Landing on. So power levers idle. Yes, they are. Propeller RPM. Check below 1,000. Yes, it is. Fuel pumps. Check off. They are off. Water switch. ECUA. So this is right here. So put that to A. See that's a fail. Water switch auto, should message go away. Water switch ECUB, see that say fail. Go back to auto. Then we make sure that our enunciators are in the green, parking brake is set, ECU test button set and hold. So we do this on both engines. Check our voters, botters. Fine. That's what it's supposed to do, and I believe this is part of this aftermarket uh, uh, version of the plane I downloaded from FlightSim.to. I don't believe the uh, Microsoft plane has these features. Um, you can actually use these, but FlightSim.to, search DA62, 
improved model and you can download it. I can't remember who the author is. but so Then you go ahead and that's our pedo failing. Just hold that in. Come over here. I'm holding the mouse right now, holding it in still. It does its checks on the left engine. Kind of like a run up in a prop airplane. Um, sorry, uh, conventional non FADEC airplane. So that's how it does it. And these messages will appear during that. And then once it's done its test, let the button out. And same for the other engine. Hold that in or EDC B fail. Then you can see it run itself up here. Same in a prop where you run the uh, prop lever, high RPM, low RPM, and adjust the RPM with a throttle. So same idea, it's just a FADEX computerized way of doing it. So okay, so that all looks good. And then it says available power checks. So max for ten seconds. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and slowly bring her back down. That's the eaters. We checked everything during that. We can see things were going up. Instruments check with a normal range, RPM, and load. Okay, so that's basically our the run-up check in the DA62. So then I combine my gust check here and make sure we're ready to go. So gas is good, it's nearly full. Undercarriage is down. Switches. We can go ahead and turn our pumps on. Get our landing lights on. Don't need any flaps for this takeoff. I did say that the other day, didn't I? <laughs> so we're ready to go here. So we'll just call in taking off. Sombrero traffic. Charlie Juliet uh, Sierra Victor Romeo uh, taking off runway one five. Departure to the south. Sombrero traffic. Okay, we can go ahead and take off now. So. Power to full, off on the brakes, and maintain center as best we can. You can see the wind is active now, 14 knot headwind, so. and rotate. And off we go. Goodbye, Sunborough. Till next time. And they got a hill out here in front of this runway. Um, all right, well, positive rate, tap the brakes, bring the gear up. Gear is up, gear is locked, okay. Pull back out of 100% a little bit, down to 95, 6-ish. Okay, we don't have any flaps, we can take those off right now, but we don't have any on. We're at a thousand feet, we can go ahead and do the rest of our gust check and call in. Gas is good, undercarriages, up switches, pumps can come off, landing lights can go off, flaps are up, throttle is set. Sunboro traffic, Charlie Victor Romeo is uh, climbing 1,400 for 8,000, making a right turn on the course. Good day, Sunboro traffic. Just call them and let them know, and that's, that's all fine and dandy. Let's get on course here and make our right turn. Keep our nose up. I see we're nice and light so we can just climb like a rocket. Not always good if you're an FSE trying to make uh, some FSE bucks, but makes the flight a lot simpler, I guess you could say. Okay, so we'll just overcorrect here a little bit until we get established on course and then we'll be correct. Yeah, she just wants to climb, climb, climb. Which is good. We are and it's getting shooter sure right up to fifteen degrees and see what happens. Since we got no passengers, we got our ascent rate 2300. Woohoo! Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that with passengers and we get a little freaked out. But I'll go back to our comfortable 10 degrees. 
C95 are reading on the mo the engines. Don't want to call it motors. It's it's not what you call <laughs> airplane engines. In certain fields of work, you would call motors motors, but not in flying. Aviation. Pretty good here. So. Let's trim her up so she kind of stays around 10 degrees there. We go ahead and bump that heading there so that stays 242 ish. That's something to follow so we're not all over the place. So 8,000 we said, right? Get into standard atmosphere here. Okay, let's follow that heading we bumped there. Don't want to be all over the place. Yeah, the clouds in this game are just outstanding. They are beautiful, beautiful pieces of artwork. The best clouds I've ever seen in a sim. Did have weather injection programs for P3D years ago, and they. I mean, they made things look good, but not this good. So. so yeah, like I said, once we get established, 8,000 on a cruise autopilot, go ahead and push the sim up to 3x. And uh, get to Inverness there a little quicker, but so you don't have to listen to me for a long time. <laughs> there we are, 95. Yeah, when I get 10 subs, guys, I want to uh, I want to show you guys a, a video of my sim pit, everything I have set up here, all my hardware, computer, and uh, also I want to just drop lightning, lightning uh, Bitcoin to lucky subscribers and commenters. So. Subscribe, comment, let me know what you think of the channel so far. I've had it up for almost a week. Just getting into the YouTube, getting into the... Uh, I've used YouTube a lot in the past, but just starting to record. And, you know, share my hobby with, with others. Maybe I can learn something, maybe you can learn something. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> maybe not. Who knows. But so far I'm enjoying it. Makes flight to me a little more fun, to be honest with you. Okay, so we're right on the line there. We're nearly at our cruise. Make a slight descending turn here. Right at 8,000. Speed will be coming up all right. We should do power attitude trim. I'm not doing that, but hey. Can you see? watching the altitude, I'm not watching the course. Yeah, let's get back on course. Here. Yeah, it's just a little more to the right. We're gaining, we're gaining. We don't want to be gaining. Stay right at that 8,000. Just the trim on my Thrustmaster here. Okay, we'll go ahead and let Charlie take over now. So Engaging autopilot, autopilot, altitude, and nav. So Charlie, the autopilot, will uh, adjust our altitude properly for us, and he'll put us right on course. I'll hand fly a smaller VFR flight one day. I just don't want to be hand flying for hours on end. Being a somewhat perfectionist, you gotta, you know, you'd be adjusting uh, trim every second. So we're 61 and a half nautical miles to Bokal. It's our first waypoint here. So, so it appears we're established. Do a quick cruise check and then go ahead and uh, push the sim up to 3x here. 
So cruise power lever, yes, it's up to 95. I believe it's still at 95. 93? 83, sorry. We can go up to 85. 85, 85. Okay, that looks good. 85. Trim as required. Trim as autopilot. Enunciators. Let's have a look at the enunciators. Oil temperature's fine, oil pressure's fine, cooling temperature is fine, they're all in the green, fuel temperature's okay, fuel level is fine. Okay, this all looks good here, temperatures are okay, and your endurance, everything's right on the track. Full turn the green, amps are in the green, gearbox temperature's in the green, coolant is a little cooler on the left and the right, no big deal, oil temperature's a little higher on the right. Uh, the ice fluid is in the green. And our amps seem to be charging a little less on the left, which is no big deal. It's not way out there. Okay. So that is that. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and throw it on 3X. I'll just... Uh, just check our recording there. Okay, so I have a button program on my Thrustmaster here. So one, two... There you go, you can really see things moving now. So you can see the time is going down quite quickly. Um, it's like multiples of eight. <laughs> so yeah, she's shaving off quick, so that's good. I like to do this on longer flights than 3X, 2 or 3X, no more than that though. I don't want to uh, mess up anything to do with FATSIM or FS economy. And I found 3X seems to work quite well. So there's Sandy Airport down there. It's a challenging little runway to, to land on. So, looks like we're in between layers here. That's okay. When we're getting close to Coquel, I'll touch the sim down again so we can make a proper turn. I don't want this, the speed to uh, turn the aircraft, like I said, way off course and try to correct way off course. Going left and right and all over the place. They look at the FATSIM map and they're like, what the heck is that guy doing? So, yeah, we're getting within five miles. I'll slow her down again. Normal rate. Make our turn, get established, and I'll speed her back up on our way to Inverness. Five here, four, three, so one, two, three. So that's normal time again, I believe. So you can see the clock ticking off down there in the bottom right. So we'll let the, uh, the autopilot grab this waypoint, make its turn. While it's doing that, we'll check our procedures here for uh, for our approach in Inverness. So let's see here. We want Runway 5. Uh, yeah, we want runway 5. So. I mean, look at the weather down in Inverness is just stunning right now. So it's probably do a visual. Check the weather here. Yeah, we got 14 degrees temperature, four knots at 40 degrees. We got uh, scattered 4,100, few at 200 feet. So there we go. Make our turn. I 
but we'll go ahead and set uh, set IL, ILS for uh, runway five. We'll just tag one of the waypoints and see if our ILS will do anything. Minimums off. We don't need minimums. Go ahead and load that. Load. Yes. Okay. So ten mile range. Zoom back in here. So yeah, it's, it's going to, but we'll probably tag off here somewhere. FFO5, no, that's too close. Full five, we'll, go, we'll be at uh, 2,700 feet by then. So. And it's over 88 miles, so. Or five miles. We'll go ahead and speed the sim back up. Looks like we're in some cloud here. Doesn't look like we have any icing yet. Clouds don't look like icing clouds so far. Maybe off to the west they do. Okay, guys, we'll go ahead and speed it up again. So. There we go. You can see the time going. Nautical miles dropping off there. And multiples, uh, multiples of 8-ish. flying from Inverness to Edinburgh once and uh, had the speed set to 3x. Went off, did something, come back a couple minutes. Engines full of ice, spinners, everything full of ice. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. Had to drop down to 4,000 over the Grampian Mountains. Just made it into uh, Edinburgh. Still had ice on the engines right to land. So. That's what happens when you don't pay attention. <laughs> so here we are over the, uh, I want to say Highlands. Wicks off to our east. There it is down there. It's just an unlucky number. Let's see if we can get the lucky number. Now these clouds look bad. Yeah, these ones don't look friendly. They're 55 miles. Feels still good. All the enunciators look fine. Don't see any visual signs of any ice. Have a chug of coffee here. A little turbulent here. The winds are really low though, so that's, that's also good. It signifies that uh, the weather's more stable than it looks. Forty miles. We get down to well, thirty, thirty-five. We'll slow her down here. It's plan our descent. One, two, three. She puts back to normal time. That looks right. Okay, guys. We'll plan our uh, approach and stuff. So flight plan. Let's jump right in there and tag off that. Uh, what was it? FF05. Yeah, it was FF05. Hit direct. Listen, guys, I don't know if this is a proper way to do this, but that's how I do it, anyways. I mean, unless ATC is going to tell me something different. Okay, so 42 miles from there. Go ahead and Program in 05 on our heading, so 051. We are runway heading 051. And we'll pre 
select our altitude here. 2,700. So we've got lots of time. We have 40 miles to that waypoint. So. Seven. And we'll go ahead and uh, program Inverness into the old uh, Nav 1. And it's the same in some boroughs. Got nothing showing up yet. Let me go ahead and put in the Inverness in VOR 108. Uh, no, it's not 108. Sorry, it's 10, 109. 20. 109. 20. There we go. Let's check that and see. Yeah, so 30, 30 miles to the airport, 39 miles to our waypoint, so we want 9 miles final, 10 mile final. That's great. Maybe we can see if our ILS decides to work today. Things are looking good up here. Have no signs of visualizing or anything. So. Let's check the SciTech panel and see 29.8. So we'll go back, set it to the ILS frequency 185. See these changing up here. Five is active. One hundred nine twenty is inactive. So. I've always wondered about this G one thousand. How the one with a box around it you think would be active? One without it wouldn't. Well, that's the way it is. Anyways. Of course, we have a, a ADF. Don't really use ADF with this airplane. Kind of dormant technology that ADF, isn't it? Okay, so we're 35 miles. Check if any controllers are on down in this area. Still got nothing, guys. No controllers, so we'll remain on Unicom for now. EISN Center is on 131150. Not sure where that is. Three one. Tune them and see if. I should have went the other way, it's tuning up. One five zero. Halfway there, there. One five zero. Two. That's cool. Ballon, balloon, castle, airstrip. We gotta check out some of the VFR sightings here. Scotland, I mean, you know, maybe jump into a little DA-40 or something, rip around. In FSE, I do, I have, so I own a DA-62 in FSE and a DA-40. So, one point years ago, when I was playing P3D, I leased a DC-6. That was great. That was fun. Lots of fun doing that. So, too much plane for me. I know I didn't get the PMDG model. That would have been exciting, but my system back then probably wouldn't have run it. So. Yeah. Will now, though, that's for sure. So we're about 31 miles. Probably start a slow descent down to 27. We'll call Inverness, let them know we're on our way. sure we're on the right frequency, eh, guys? <laughs> okay, 122.8, so... Everness traffic, Charlie, Juliet, Sierra, Victor, Romeo, type diamond twin, is 30 miles north, uh, 8,000 inbound, ILS, runway 05. We'll report uh, final ILS, runway 05 for Inverness traffic. Okay, so that lets everyone know that we're, we're on our way. Yeah, we'll go ahead and start a slow descent, so let me leave our throttle, hit the FLC button, see it show up there on the PFD, FLC, 157 knots. We have our height programmed in, just come back on the throttle a little bit here. 69, man's favorite number, keep going down here, oh, it's 60, descent rate, keep it Try and keep it below a thousand for now. We got a lot of a lot of miles left yet. So. 
Fern. Fern. Anyone know what Fern is? I do not. Seven hundred and six fifty. Let's uh, go ahead and set the Q and H for Inverness. One zero two four. One zero two four. Puts us to our lucky number seven seven seven. And we'll come back a bit more in the throttle. Shoot for that thousand foot descent rate. Try descending in a prop, prop plane with a conventional prop plane, no FADEC and uh, no engine management. A lot more exciting. Probably one of these days we'll do something like that, guys. I'll, I got all the uh, knobs for the Bravo. Set up a throttle, the mixture, or a throttle, prop, and mixtures. But all I've really used since I've got this is just the uh, two center levers with the DA. So. But I do, I'm really looking at the uh, Twin Otter. I really want to maybe pick up the Twin Otter and fly that one around. So, what do you guys think? Should I get the Twin Otter? I mean, it hasn't went on sale, but I really, really want that plane. <laughs> It's a different style of flying than flying with the G1000. You're conventional again, but that plane can go anywhere and everywhere. So, you know, that's the thing with flight simulators. It's so open and vast, and you can do so many different things. I mean, go straight up bush pilot to uh, right up to airliner. I like GA flying. I never thought I would like it. I always wanted to fly airliners and this and that. And I flew, uh, like I say, an FS uh, economy. I got the, the uh, DC-6, at least one of those. I flew that around in uh, P3D for probably a year. Made a whole heck of a ton of money. Bought all sorts of different airplanes. Bought, sold, bought, sold. Opened up little companies inside that uh, FSC. That was great. You can actually hire real real people to fly routes and stuff and, and now I just you know I got rid of some of the companies and whatever and now I just fly my, my own planes my own routes so it's enjoyable that's kind of like uh, air hauler I don't know if anyone has played air hauler it's another good one it's lots of fun we're 11 miles from Inverness we're 18 miles from our waypoint here Yeah, I played air hauler for uh, FSX years ago. That was that's a lot of fun. Seemed to have a lot of failures on that the aircraft. <laughs> I remember landing lots without gear, and then landing uh, after a bird strike, turn around, land after a bird strike, or your gauges don't work all of a sudden, you've got a fuel leak. Yeah, it made it made it really exciting. Might have happened a bit more often than realistically. Still lots of fun. We're coming down here, good guys. We've got another 2,000 feet till we're at our signed altitude for our waypoint there. We're 16 miles. We can even slow the descent down a little more so we maybe gauge it gauge it a bit better here, we'll see. STC Center, I wonder what that is, 126300, that, 126300, I don't know. I don't know what the STC Center is. Let's tune them and find out, I guess. Last sip of coffee there. I have coffee with natural honey in the mornings. 100% natural honey. Unpasteurized. Don't eat in the mornings. Don't eat at uh, noon. I uh, fast 18 hours a day. 
So I stop eating at 8 o'clock the night before until 2 o'clock the next day. So I get my 18 hours. In. Started four years ago now. Started. Stanley Climb Team for a movement of the 6,000 feet in climb at Jerry T. Climb about 2,000 pounds from. 2006,000 KNH1025, channel is now on Whiskey Uniform. Yeah, I'm not sure where that is, but they definitely got action there. Yeah, so like I was saying, I started at 16 hours, 16 eight, so 16 hours fasting, 8 hours of eating. Now I do 18 hours fasting, 6 hours of eating. And I did, started this 2 years ago, so work your way up. It's very good for your health, very good for your body. And then you don't want to eat as much. You know, you don't... The human body be amazed at what it actually needs to run on. It's quite amazing. But yeah, I'll, I'll drink coffee. And, you know, have a shot of honey during my fast. Coffee, water. No food. So, so yeah, a little inside details about me. There's Inverness there. There's our runway 05. Far right of the airport there. There's the inactive 1129. Straight down the middle. So we're ripping pretty good. We're nearly at our altitude and we got nine miles to go just under to our waypoint. Let the speed come down here. Here's our Inverness there. So yeah, like I said, guys, once we get parked, we'll jump out of the aircraft, go tour the airport, kind of like yesterday's video. And uh, fingers crossed, so we don't uh, our sim doesn't crash on us. It does happen. When I, it seems to happen with the Xbox controller. I don't know what the story is there, but I do have a lot of peripherals plugged in. I mean, probably something to do with that. you wouldn't the diamond actually I mean you can't move the seats in the DA62 you move the pedals towards you so. that's to do with safety they kind of designed it like an F1 car this whole pillar here and everything else to absorb as much impact during a, an accident as possible right so, so 5.2 until we make our turn to final Go over our set checklist at all? Don't think we did. Power levers as required, our speed as required, yes, trim was autopilots. Before landing, we'll throw in our gusts that I do. Can I go through all the before landing checklists? I should pull one up on my device here. There's the city of Inverness. Maybe I'll tour that later on. Earth or something. Okay, so we're about to make our turn here. It's gonna be a sharp right turn right to uh, right to final. That seems like a beautiful city and water out that way, and a river. I wouldn't know. I've never been to the UK, never been to Scotland. real life. Flight simulator, I live over here. <laughs> in this traffic, Cessna Golf Echo Tango Delta Charlie at Northern Apron, taxi into runway 05, uh, taxiway Echo Alpha, Inverness. 
Everyone has traffic, uh, Charlie Juliet Sierra Victor Romeo, type Diamond Twin. We are uh, making a turn to final runway 05, seven miles out. There we go, we got someone on. <laughs> That's awesome. So we can slow down here a little bit. So our turn doesn't end off way out in the middle of nowhere. Second now, FF05. There we go. It's almost like a 180 degree turn here. See how Charlie handles this. So it's a little too slow there. We'll keep her around 120. Push us nine miles out. Inverness there. Add a little speed there for us. Looks like he's getting us back on course here. Wow. Go too fast. Be overcorrecting and undercorrecting. Never nice traffic, Charlie Victor Romeo, 7.9 mile final runway, 05 ILS, uh, never nice traffic. So we'll let him know again that we're coming in, depending where he is. He's in the little Cessna, so that's exciting flying one of those are exciting aircraft to fly. So we're tuned in to our, our ILS here, but again, 108.5. Five. I'll set it on that one end. It's showing up on our. Let's go approach. No, see, nothing happens. It's... What if we switch this to CDI? Will I grab the ball? No. Five nine oh. Approach. Approach switches to nav, so we gotta slow down here. Let's do our gust check. Gas is good. Undercarriage can go down five miles. Everness traffic, Charlie Victor Romeo's five mile final. Runway 05, ILS established. Undercarriage is down, switches, pumps can go on, landing lights can go on. Go ahead and drop one notch of flaps. And we'll turn off the autopilot and bring her in manually here. Why? Because that's more fun, that's why. So there's our ball way, way down there. Trim the aircraft for a nose down attitude here. Then we'll add our full flaps. Slow us right down four miles to four track miles touchdown. We gotta chase that ball, we gotta chase that ball. Slower rate down. See, in a conventional prop airplane, you'd be you'd be worried about cooling issues with this low var, uh, RPM. I'm sure. So we're at 2,000. Tracking real good here. Do a quick gust check. Gas is good. Undercarriage is down. Switches are on. Pumps are on. Landing lights are on. Flaps are full. Probably don't need full flaps. If you look at our wind, it's zero now. That'll help slow us down since we're trying to mess around with that ILS again. Looks like we're four white right now. The ball's not registering yet. You can see it there. Everyone is traffic. Charlie Victor Romeo, two mile final runway, zero 05 ILS established. should probably be saying visual established because that's basically what this is, a visual, it's not really an ILS. Our 
tracking, but we're not descending. 88. 88, back to the future. <laughs> 500. Okay, 500 feet. So we kind of bring the nose up a bit here. So we got one red, three white. Let's see if we can see them down there. It'll be way over. White, two red, right on track. There's our ball there. Set the altitude uh, indicator. There we are. Our speed is looking good. There are four red, but we're GA, so it's okay. Speed's looking good. A bit fast. It's all right. Right over the numbers. Left right of here to keep her centered and off on the throttle. There we go. Bring her flaps up. Inverness traffic, Cessna Golf Echo Tango Delta Charlie lining up 05 Inverness. Turn our pumps off. Yeah, so he's behind us, so yeah, that's, I thought he was over here, but yeah, he's behind us, so that's fine. So we'll taxi off, let him know that we're off the, the active and. Uh, That'll be that. Governor's traffic, Charlie Victor Romeo is clear of the active. Taxiing to parking via runway 11 and taxiway Echo. Should have said Inverness traffic, but I did forget. Okay, so we'll go ahead, turn off our landing, turn on our taxi. Go ahead, turn off our pedo. We did bring the flaps all the way up, so quick gust check again. We'll go gas is good, undercarriage is down. Switches, pumps are off, flaps are here up. Inverness traffic, Cessna Golf, Echo Tango, Delta Charlie, departing runway 05 to the east, climbing to 1000 Inverness. Their taxi lights are on, so let's do a quick check. Yeah, it's always nice to have all the traffic on when you're flying other people on. Makes it more exciting, that's for sure. That's why I fly over here. I mean, living in Western Canada and flying this early in the morning, you'd never get a controller on, really. But it's, I choose to fly over here and you get some action. So that's good. But we'll park between these jets again here. Set our parking brake, drop the throttle. There's our FSE window, so that flight recorded, that's good news. Like I said guys, we'll jump out of the airplane here and go walk around the airport. Have a look at the airport, right? So we'll shut her down. We'll go ahead with our checklist, we'll go to our parking checklist. Parking brake is set. Yes, it is. The avionic master is off. Is it? No, it's not. The avionic master off. So that's off. Electrical consumer is off. So taxi light can go off. Strobe light can go off. And we'll go to our engine master. We'll start with the right side first. So right side is off. See the gauges die down there. Go left side off. There's the gauges there. Anti-collision lights can go off. It's a nav light on the Alpha. Then we can go to Master. That can go off. And then I turn off the alternators as well. So. Okay, so everything's off in the plane. Parking brake is set. We'll go ahead and turn on our Xbox controller and pray that the uh, sim does not crash while we're having a look at the airport. There we go. Turn that on. 
we'll jump into our showcase cam here. And wow, that camera sure got thrown around. So let me just adjust this somehow. Okay, so step off the back of the airplane and jump out. Get rid of this box here. And then you'd jump out, you would uh, set your chocks, so you'd walk around, open up your compartment here, grab your wheel chocks, chalk your wheels. One wheel, two wheels, chalk that wheel. Go ahead, get your tie downs, tie down your airplane. You jump back in, set, uh, release your parking brake so it doesn't seize up on here or anything. It's going to be left for a while. Then you do your walk around to the airplane. So I'm not going to do one though. It's, uh... Yeah, I don't know what the story is with the pilots here. I had the default pilot set. He was a male at one point, and now it's a female. So not sure. That's okay though. All right, guys, we'll go look at Inverness here. This is Inverness Airport off the uh, Flight Simulator Marketplace. It was on sale, so I picked her up. It's my favorite airport in Scotland. It's uh, it's quite exciting. I believe it's uh, UK scenery. I think. Could be wrong. There's a couple guys talking here. Signature flight support. So you can see all the static planes we have here. There's a helicopter there. Jets where I parked there. Small little Cessna right here. Maybe is that a Piper? Not sure. Beechcraft or something. Another big jet there. Some floating cargo there. Look at that. It floats. It's floating. It's floating. <laughs> it's like some... Uh, oh, don't want to walk right into the wing there. Another hangar here. Some buildings. Just slowly walk around. I think if you move too quickly, the game might want to crash with the Xbox controller. We don't want that. So here's the fence. See, Inverness has a fence. So, I don't know. Sunboro doesn't, but different developers. Like Sunboro is Orbex, and uh, I believe this one's UK 2000 scenery, UK scenery or something. So here we are on a taxiway. Taxis to uh, a hangar here. The jet parked out there. That. Looks like a pretty cool vehicle with what is that a snowplow uh, I'd guess sort of snowplow sweeper parking lot out there looks pretty full today here's the fuel for the airplanes here your jet a your 100 ll stop proceed only on receipt of ATC approval. Okay. The hangars. Check this way. Make sure we don't get hit by an airplane. <laughs> There's another guy there. See, the guys are... The, the NPCs are alive in this scenery. They're not fully static like Sunboro. That guy, he's, I think he's an MS-2000. 2020 guy, but anyway. Here's some stairs, should we go up them? Okay, we'll go up these stairs. Whoa! These are the stairs to get onto the bigger airplanes, the passengers. Walk out here and they uh, walk up these stairs. And they go into the airplane. So I'm trying to mimic these steps, but it's not working well. So. There's another guy. He's talking to his friend there. Maybe he's talking to himself. I don't know. <laughs> so we'll walk over to the terminal building. There's some more floating cargo. Ah! Here's the terminal building. It's 
It's designed pretty well. Well, this is one of the buildings. I don't think this is the terminal building. We're not that short, are we? Okay, these are static people. Well, that guy's not, but these are. Guys, it's not that cold out. You don't need to be frozen. <laughs> Alright, so we had a look at that building there. We'll go look at the, uh... It's the main building? The main terminal building? We'll just shuffle through here. Uh, sorry, pal. How are you doing today? Good? Yeah, good. Right on, me too. Welcome to Inverness. So let's shuffle around these people. They're having their conversation about whatever they're talking about. Walk in the door here. The handle seems a little high. Okay, so we're inside the terminal here. Yeah, you can tell that uh, oh, they got a football player, or soccer player. Player, 57. Okay, I can tell that the people are uh, somewhat static inside the terminal building. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you can't make a super amazing, perfect scenery every time. Yeah, so this is inside the waiting area. Inside the airport. Have a look around here. People are talking to that guy there. They look like the same people that are on the other side, don't they? Anyway, whatever. Adds to the uh, realism. That looks like a store over there, but it's very static, as you can tell. Couldn't buy anything from there. But oh well. So we'll go. Can we go through this door? Let's see. Well, this just goes into an empty area. No. Go through this door. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, you can do. There's some more people here, but the windows seem to be blacked out. So this is kind of neat, this terminal waiting area. Have a seat here. Wait for your flight. Yeah, pretty cool. So we'll go head out this door. Walk around here. See the poles are added. For uh, this airport here, so... Here's another waiting area. We could go in there, it just seems like more of the same with the other one. There's the fence, to the parking lot, another building here, small container. Oh, it seems to be stuttering, I don't want it to crash. Some more air stairs. Yeah, it's really good scenery, this, uh, I think this is better than the ORBX scenery. Anyways, this is a gate that goes and lets you out of the airport, so we'll pretend to go through there. Yeah, that's the airport. I mean, there's improved markings along the runways, and they look a little more realistic and stuff. And there's another building across there. I don't know how far we want to stretch this video out. If we want to go check all the buildings. We'll have another tour, though. At a later date. I'm frequently at this airport, so... Just cut across here through the parking lot, and we'll get back to our plane. We'll speed up a little. So you can set the drone speed as well. Whatever you like here. I just kind of mimic it for walking or right now running. So here's the main building where you'd walk into the airport. Walk in here, let's see. Yeah, it's pretty static -y in here, but well, oh, pretty cool otherwise. Got a bus waiting out here. Some more people, another entrance. Nicely detailed fence as well, which is good. Wouldn't want anyone running onto the runway. So should we go through this side of the parking lot, you guys? Yeah, I think so. Let's check it out. Check it out. Doesn't look like there's a gate here. Oh, maybe we can just walk through the fence. <laughs> Okay, so what do you think of Inverness Airport? It's pretty neat. This is the uh, Marketplace Airport. It was on sale, so I decided to pick it up. It's, it's decent. Well, these aftermarket airports add a lot more realism than the stock ones. A few newer things here and there. Newer buildings. A lot of static aircraft, which, which are good and bad. I mean, when you're on VATSIM, you can have people spawning on top of them and stuff. Yeah, that can get annoying, but not too hard to work around. 
There's our plane, and we're a giant again because that's eight feet, so be underneath there. I believe there's another, there's other buildings over there, and there's our red jet way over there, so. Well, we're not going to get into too much of that today. Anyways, guys, hope you uh, enjoyed the video, enjoyed the flight, used the time acceleration during this flight, so it wasn't too long of a cruise. Small, quick tour of Inverness, the terminal building, some of the hangars. Aftermarket version of Inverness, anyway. Yeah, like, subscribe. I do plan on showing everyone a video when I get 10 subscribers of my uh, sim pit, all the hardware. And uh, I want to drop lightning on commenters and subscribers. So I want to start doing that after 10 subs as well. So like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for another video, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great, great day.